It does not matter to Maik how strong or smart one is. It only matters what one can do. Across the vast landscape which is the province of Skyrim, from the highest peak to the darkest cave, you can find adventures, treasure, and secrets in nearly every corner. As you venture across the land of the Nords though, you have to choose how you play, what skills you rely on, and what goals you set for yourself. To that end, there are a multitude of different things you can do to tweak your playstyle, and one of the largest things that can improve your experience are the 13 Standing Stones. In the Elder Scrolls, there are 13 birth signs that correspond with celestial bodies, and being a hero who's in control of your own destiny, you can choose which of these to live by. To do so, you simply need to find the proper standing stone and activate it to call down power from the heavens to bless you. A small note though is you can only have one blessing at a time. However, you can switch between stones at any time and as often as you please, so don't feel like you're ever locked in. To start things off, we'll begin with the most obvious and difficult to miss standing stones in the game. The first three standing stones are located just west of the village Riverwood. These are known as the Guardian Stones, consisting of the Thief, Mage, and Warrior. Each one does the same thing, speed skill advancement by 20%, but each one only affects a limited number of skills. The Warrior Stone modifies block, heavy armor, one-handed, smithing, and two-handed. The Thief Stone speeds the advancement of the skills Archery, Alchemy, Light Armor, Lockpick, Pickpocket, Sneak, and Speech. Finally, the Mage Stone gives the Tailwind effect to Alteration, Destruction, Enchanting, Conjuration, Illusion, and Restoration. These stones are hard to miss and very close to where you begin your adventures in Skyrim. Even if you're uninterested in the main quest and following the main road, it's advisable that you at least find and select one of these stones before going off in your own direction. However, there are far more stones to be found across Skyrim's landscape. Following on the coattails of the three Guardian Stones, and near identical to them, is the Lover Stone, located northwest of Markarth, southwest of Karthwastern, and very close to Kolskegger Mine. While the aforementioned Guardian Stones each increase the advancement rate of a select few skills by 20%, the Lover Stone increases the advancement rate of all skills by 15%. While this perk may not be as potent for dedicated roleplayers, it's certainly the best choice for anyone choosing to play as a jack of all trades, and as a result, is likely the best choice for most players. There's another stone that will also greatly benefit nearly all playstyles in the game, the Steed. The Steed Stone is located northwest of Solitude, not far from Wolf Skull Cave. What makes this standing stone so useful is how it grants three separate passive perks. First, it completely removes movement penalties when wearing any type of armor. Second, it makes any armor you wear weightless, freeing up extra inventory space, which compounds with the final perk. Number three, an increase of 100 to your maximum carry weight. The Steedstone clearly focuses on helping warriors become agile and loot mongers to indulge in hoarding as much as possible from every dungeon they crawl through. If you don't get why the Steed Stone is worth the time to find, then it's likely you just don't understand what makes Skyrim fun for a lot of people. The next stone is the Lady. While being useful to all types of character builds, it lends itself best to warriors in their ilk who do business up close and personal. The Lady Stone can be found north of Falkreath, on an island in the middle of Lake Ilanata. The reason the Lady Stone is best fit to melee-oriented playstyles is because it enhances both stamina and health regeneration by 25%. While these boosts are nominal at best, they do allow for shorter downtime between fights and the ability to launch more power attacks during drawn out battles. It won't be surprising if the perks seem to be a bit lackluster though. Next in line is the Lord's Stone, which is almost directly east of Morthal, southwest of Dawnstar, and right around the corner from the shrine to Merun's Dagon. Like the previous three standing stones, the Lord Stone can be beneficial to many playstyles, as no matter how you handle combat, everyone will eventually take a few hits. With the Lord Stone active, you become more durable in combat by first gaining 50 extra points of armor, as well as a constant buff of 25% resistance to all magic spells. 
The magic resistance is particularly useful too, because it stacks with the elemental resistances found on enchanted armor. The same goes for the innate abilities like the Nord's 50% resistance to frost, or the Dunmer's resistance to fire. Moving right along, the alternative to the Lord Stone and its magic resistance is the Atronach Stone. The Atronach Stone can be found a ways northwest of Riften, not that far from the Hamlet Shore Stone, and just north of Mistwatch. This standing stone is mostly geared towards magic users, as it grants you an additional 50 points of magicka to cast with, as well as 50% spell absorption, which converts attack spells into magicka. However, it has a con in which you regenerate magicka 50% slower. The spell absorption and magicka regen effects theoretically balance each other out. However, the spell absorption will only convert attack spells into magicka half the time. The reason being that spell absorption either activates completely or not at all, meaning there's an equal 50-50 chance to fully absorb a destruction spell or just take flat damage from it. The result is a disfavorable balance, on top of the perk being completely useless against warrior-type enemies who attack with steel instead of spell. If that's not a problem for you though, then have at it. Moving deeper into the heart of magic use is the Apprentice Stone. The Apprentice Stone is standing in the middle of the swamp halfway between Solitude and Morthal, right around the corner from Fort Snowhawk. The particular effects of this stone lend themselves to magic users very well, as first, your rate of magicka regeneration is doubled. Secondary, and the penalty for this though, is how you take double damage from any magic spells that hit you. Properly using this perk is a true balancing act, as it can easily lead to quick and untimely deaths. Whether or not you think the risk of the Apprentice Stone is worth the reward, though, is entirely up to you. Now for the darker side of the Arcane Arts, the Ritual Stone. The Ritual Stone can be found directly east of Whiterun, west of Valtheme Towers, and just south of Grey Winter Watch. This standing stone grants you a very powerful, necromantic power that can be cast once a day. The Greater Power is an Area of Effect spell, which raises all corpses to fight for you for three and a half minutes. This power is particularly useful, because it allows you to raise creatures like giants, which cannot be raised with any other spells. Also, this power, unlike reanimation spells, doesn't disintegrate bodies when the effect wears off, which means if you properly exploit this feature, you can potentially build up and consistently reanimate an undead army to do your bidding. Next up is the Serpent Stone, located directly east of the College of Winterhold, almost directly north of Black Coast Cave, on the southern tip of the most northeast island on the map. This particular stone's usefulness is slightly split between thief and mage-type characters. When activated, the Standing Stone grants you a greater power, which can be cast once a day. The power allows you to simultaneously paralyze an enemy for 5 seconds and deal 25 points of damage. Quite simply put, this is a panic spell, so you can get away from your enemy and put some good distance between the two of you. It's not a bad power, but honestly, it has limited usefulness since it can only be cast once a day and only works on one enemy. This next stone, the Shadow Stone, truly moves into the Thief and Assassin territory. The Shadow Stone is found more south than west of Riften and not that far from Snowshod Farm. The unique feature of this standing stone is how, when activated, it grants you a greater power, which allows you to become invisible for 60 seconds once a day. This power has its use for all playstyles, but obviously it's best suited to those who stick to the shadows. If you ever can't get past someone, or maybe you need to vanish after being discovered by a large party of enemies, the shadow stone can help you out. With this, we arrive at the end of the list, and the last stone to cover is the tower stone. The Tower Stone is located halfway between Dawnstar and Winterhold, on top of a cliff amongst many glaciers. The Tower Stone grants you a greater power that allows you to unlock any lock up to expert difficulty once a day. This greater power is fantastic if you don't want to bother with unlocking any pesky chest or door, or maybe you just don't have any picks left and you can use it as a last stand. Just keep in mind that it is a greater power, which can only be used once every 24 hours.
Not every standing stone has an effect that's truly valuable, and after going over the list, you now know that in some cases, it's the exact opposite. Even when a blessing turns out to be a mixed bag though, just remember, each stone is meant to benefit a different playstyle. Also, if nothing else, they can serve as a unique way to spice up how you play and how much of a challenge you have during your adventures. If by chance you're hungry for more info though, and how you can create a unique character, then check out the Skyrim Character Start Guide for special racial perks, or maybe a special character challenge guide. Thanks for watching and listening. I'm William Strife, and I'll see you later.